Can a 30 watt light improve your terpene levels by up to 8%? Well, it looks like the answer is yes. And that's what we're going to talk about on today's video. But before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. If you want stronger, healthier plants, check out Real Growers Recharge. It helps build bigger roots for bigger fruits. So to learn more about it, head on over to realgrowers.com. All right, now back to the show. I see you ready to get into this with me. I think so. This this video is going to disprove some of my fantasies, I think. You were mentioning improving terpene levels. Before we get into terpene, if you would, explain what trichomes are. Well, trichomes are where the terpenes and cannabinoids are stored. The trichomes are this little, looks like a ball on top of a shaft, and that ball is what's loaded with the cannabinoids, which is the CBD and the THC, and then the terpenes, which are all those uh, components that contribute to flavor. So that's your uh, limonene and your pinene and all those things. Uh, that's what gives it that entourage effect that actually makes the, uh, the cannabis work. Okay, so when you zoom in on a picture of a cannabis nug and you see those little white, milky white spikes, that's what the trichomes are? Yes, exactly, exactly. And the more of them, or even in theory, just the bigger they are, the more cannabinoids and terpenes are going to hold. Okay, and you mentioned the the uh, entourage effect. Now, I go into the dispensary and everybody asks for the highest THC count, but terpenes are also important? Yeah, terpenes are huge. That's what everybody's finding out. I mean, you can uh, try 100% pure THC and it's not going to really get you there. It all has to do with that entourage effect, those terpenes coming together with those cannabinoids to give you that, uh, that effect. That, that medicated effect. Okay. And you made a pretty bold claim at the beginning of this video, a 30 watt light can increase the terpene levels in my plants. Yeah. Cause this is something new. This isn't most of the time they, uh, the lights are used to photosynthesize plants between right around 400. And I think it's around 700 nanometers. There's this, this range that the plants can see and that's where they're going to photosynthesize. That's the par range. Uh, this, goes outside of that. This goes where the plants can't really see it, uh, but they can have a reaction to it. And it's UV light. Uh, it's the same way that we respond to UV light. And I think we're all familiar with UV light. If you don't put suntan lotion on the top of your head, what happens, I see? Yeah, I get a sunburn because I'm bald. Get a sunburn. Yeah, well, what that's doing, like the sun tanning is actually your body making melanin in reaction to the sun. So your body's making that natural sunscreen, we'll call it. Well, the plant has that same reaction as to where it's out able to make these terpenes uh, to combat and to try to save uh, the leaf surface, to try to keep that from being burnt. And if you think about what a trichome looks like, it almost looks like a tree, right? Got the trunk and then, and then the, the tree top right there, the crown. Uh, the trees are there. I, I know that under the rainforest, it's a heck of a lot uh, cooler than it is on top. I think that's the same concept. It's trying to protect that leaf surface from damage. Okay. So speaking of lights, I know that we all use those full spectrum LED lights where in the past, the blurple lights were kind of popular. Explain to me the difference between the full spectrum and the blurple before we get into this new type of light. So if you look at a PAR chart, you'll see that there's these peaks in the blue and then the red. And that's where plants can absorb that light and use it to make chlorophyll the most efficiently. So that's why blurples can get away with just using a blue and red spectrum to make a whole bunch of light, uh, but it's missing all that in the middle. So yes, theoretically, it will grow a plant and make chlorophyll, uh, but it just doesn't do a complete job. That's why there's a definite different morphology in a bud grown with a blurple light and one grown with a full spectrum. When I say full spectrum, when you have all those, all that light, uh, those colors, it makes a white light. All the colors together make white light and that's what we're using in the in the modern leds now okay so that's the full spectrum lights and now i'm seeing these supplemental uva 
lights that are now being introduced into people's groves? Can you help me out understanding what UVA is and how it helps the plants? Sure. And I'll go back to that sunscreen reference. But before I do, the plants have this PAR range, which is the range that they can, uh, that chlorophyll can be stimulated and that they can grow, that they can use. And that's anywhere between 400, I think 780, 800, something like that. On the far one side of them is like infrared and heat and microwaves. They're on the top end and on the bottom end, really low are things like UV. And I mean, it's like UVA. And then if you go lower UVB, even lower UVC, I always like to say A is all right. B will burn you and C causes cancer. So as you get lower and as you get even lower, you start getting into like X-rays and gamma rays and things that I barely understand, hmm. but it's, it's interesting. So the plant doesn't absorb, uh, doesn't absorb those to make chlorophyll, but we're starting to figure out that they do have some kind of effect for the overall morphology of the plant, the overall, uh, what you get in the end and putting some more terpenes on there as protection, very similar to what we do in the sun. It doesn't seem that crazy, does it? No, yeah, I like the way you explain that because when I was reading about this before we recorded, it was talking about how the UVA causes the plant to create more resin, just like our skin creates more mm -hmm. melanin. Yeah, but it, it's a, uh, I don't know, it helps me understand. It helps me understand the way plants absorb light and why uh, adding a little UVA uh, might be a cool trick to get a little more terpene production. And there is a study that came out uh, saying, I think it was between five and 8% increase. Of course, I don't have that study on me now, but <laughs> yeah, there, was, there wasn't a ton of information that out there. Uh, Migro LED uh, put some good information out there. I was learning a bit from him. Uh, but there is uh, just supposedly one study that verifies it. Other than that, it's just bro science. So mm. I'd love to know what you think, DGC. Okay, so bef before we're out of here, though, I, s I see that HLG has a couple of UVA supplement lights. I see some other ones out there. If I'm going to pick one up, when should I be using this light? Yeah, that's the thing. Thank you, Migro, for explaining this to me. You don't use it all the time. Last couple weeks of flower, this is at the very end to just put on the last little bit of sunscreen, that final sunscreen. You're just trying to up it just a, a couple more points. So the last couple weeks of flower and then just like... I always say this, sunshine burns if you get too much. You don't want to use this all the time. You use this a couple hours a day over the last couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, the idea is just a little, it's like the sun lamp, you know? Mm -hmm. You go home, you tan under the sun lamp. Please don't ever do that. Okay, last question before we're out of here is the different types of lights. Because I've heard you say that different lights grow differently and... Uh, this particular spectrum, was it in some of those old lights that we used to use? Yep. Yes. HPS had plenty of UV in it, unless you used glass hoods. Just the glass would stop that UV. But that's why uh, people used to have crazy good results with bare bulb HPS lights back in the day. And they were throwing off a lot of UV which is uh, interesting because when the, the LEDs came out, there was rap on them that, hey, it does change the plant morphology. The plants just don't grow the same. Maybe that's not grow science. Like the difference could have been having uh, the right amount of UV or plenty of UV. Okay, so I'm interested in growing with full spectrum lights and adding in some of these UVA supplement lights. Yes, yes. Well, go check out our friends over at HLG. HLG has a 30 watt UVA supplemental light that clicks right onto your regular LED light. Pretty cool, man. I am going to try one. I'm going to hit them up for one. But what about you? Have you tried these UV lights? What are your results? Have you seen a noticeable increase in terpene production? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and check out the other couple videos YouTube's recommending over here. Come on, what are you waiting for? Check that one out, man. It's a goodie.